Lucia is like the cutest thing, I swear to God. Hi, welcome back to another Punishing Grey Raven video. My name is Lace, and today I want to talk a bit about progression because I really, really overloaded my beginner's guide and I think I confused the hell out of a lot of you. And so what I want to do in this video is kind of like break down a couple of the key points from that one as well as share some more progression tips. But I think especially in this game, you need to be smart about progression, not just go fast like Unga Bunga, spam all of your stamina. With that being said, let's actually close the game off and jump back into that word doc that I introduced from the last video. And so again, guys, this is made by Sheena. So big shout out to Sheena. Thank you. This is probably one of the most important docs that you'll come across because it kind of tells you who is worth investing in. And so in the last video, I don't think I spent enough time on this and for that, I'm sorry. And so we are going to go into this in depth. And so with that being said, let's just jump right into it. And so each of these tables represents a different type of team. This table represents the physical team. This table represents the lightning team and so forth. You got dark, you've got fire and you've got ice. So the interesting thing about this is that the physical team actually, as you can see, is super overloaded. And so what that means is that the choices that you make for your physical team probably matters the most here. Essentially, it is ordering from top to bottom the best to the worst of the, each of their categories. So for example, Alpha is the best in the DPS and A Watanabe is not that great. In terms of the physical team, I really recommend that you hold off on investing on these three because pretty much everyone should be getting Alpha. Alpha, even like one and a half years later, she is still one of like the best physical DPSs and that is why she she is still up here right here. After that, we've got B live and S live. And I'm not sure how I feel about this because like they're both really freaking good. But to be honest, this should give you like reassurance that B live is a really, really good unit to invest into. After that, we've got S Rosetta who isn't out yet, but we've got A Kamui who is coming out next patch and then B Nanami. So B Nanami is good. It's just that if you do have the chance to get A Kamui in the next banner, which is in the alpha banner, actually technically that's not right because in the next like two or three banners, we'll be getting existing characters. So for example, like Karenina. And then after that in a month's time we'll be getting alpha banner in which the a kamui is going to be introduced and so if you're willing to hold out for a month for a kamui and s alpha technically you could like hold off on investing in b nanami however i do think that b nanami is quite decent and so if you guys are like looking for a physical dps team you should run this by the end of day seven we are actually going to be getting a free a bianca and so you can actually build a full physical dps team which is super super lit a bianca b live and b nanami and this is going to work really really well and so it's with this kind of logic that you kind of put the team comps together. However, this logic mostly applies to the physical comp. And that's just because like there are not that many options for the other ones. And so as you can see for lightning, we have S Bianca here. We've got A Liv who is the only healer for lightning. And then we've got these two over here. And so as you can tell, like this is probably like your best in slot. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't invest into A Lucia. However, if you are like a min maxer or whatever, like you do want to be investing, for example, A Liv is uh, available right now. And you could be holding out for S Bianca as well. Moving on, we see the dark team. And this is why S Kamui is so important. S Kamui is your only choice for the armored archetype for the dark team. However, at this point in time, S Kamui is actually the only dark unit in the game, if I remember correctly. And so that's why people say like S Kamui is kind of sleeping for the next six months or so until these characters get released. And so let's move on from here. And we've got a fire team, S Nanami, S Karen, and A Sophia. The fire team is just like really, really constrained. If you're going to run a team, it has to be this team. Otherwise, moving on. And as you can see, there really isn't too much choice aside from the physical. And so really, you can't really make like two too many mistakes and hopefully like using all of that logic you'll kind of get like where I'm getting at here and so with that being said hopefully you guys are going to be able to make the best choices for yourself from a min max point of view you should be holding out from like the top ones over here however if you just want to freaking play the game like for example just pick up the a bianca pick up the b live and pick up the b nanami and just have at it because like honestly the game is going to be freaking boring if you're waiting for characters for like the next six months that's kind of how I feel about s kamui however I'm more of like a long-term style player and so I'm willing to kind of invest into s kamui and like spoiler alert I didn't get S Kamui because keep in mind that there are also different archetypes for example like range versus like melee all right guys let's move on and I'm going to show you guys this thing which is the rookie missions and I'm showing you this because I've actually cleared through too many of them in my game and so I just wanted to show you like day one through to day seven essentially what you can do is that you can actually kind of like pre-farm for these events and what I mean by that is for example day three you've got clear a b two three times and what happens is that on like day two or like day three you sometimes find yourself like kind of capped on stamina but you don't have the command level to move on and so you could do stuff like this like dump some of your stamina into the ab2 however i really wanted to talk more about this because like you're going to be seeing stuff like this level up any equipment to level 40 and so what this does is that it kind of helps you like guide your stamina especially when we are being gated so for example this one level any equipment you want to be putting it into that stage where like you can upgrade resonance is it sorry not resonance overclocking because only through overclocking can you actually get your equipment up to level 40 so yeah i'll drop this in the description below so yeah just take a quick look at it and see what you can do now because it will carry 
way through to that like respective day. All right, let's finally jump into the game itself. Especially as we start the game, there are a lot of like novice missions or beginner missions or like system missions or whatever that are really focused on like upgrading five star or six star things. And so obviously we don't want to sink resources into stuff that we're never going to use again. And so one of the best places to start getting like your five star or six star memories is actually here, memory rescue. So as you can see, we've got this Erwin over here. If I go back to mission A, you'll see that for each of these ones, you'll actually get a whole bunch of these guys over here. So for example, Richelieu is actually a really, really good memory despite being a five star. And the reason is because we can run this as a two piece set effect on top of like the four piece set effect from six star. There is kind of like a six star counterpart to every five star, which is kind of like a direct upgrade. However, you can only run like six memories at a time. So you would run like a four piece set of that six star set. And as for that two piece set, Richelieu, I, I don't know if that's really how you say her name, but this is a really good choice for a two piece set, especially for the physical healers. Typically speaking, you don't want to invest into this guy because you want to pour everything into your main DPS. But on that note, you don't want to be upgrading your five star DPS memories either. And so if you are going to upgrade any five star memories, it's going to be stuff like this, the ones that are for the healers and potentially for the tanks. But really you shouldn't be because the reason I talked about this one, this memory rescue is this guy over here. Darwin is the real star of memory rescue. And so as you can see, we've got a four piece set effect and it's just really freaking massive. And so essentially Darwin just gives you a crazy amount of damage. It's a good six star. It's probably like one of the biggest staples in the game. And so what you can do is that if you clear an entire memory rescue, so if you clear this guy, this guy all the way up to the end, you actually get a Darwin piece. And then after you get your first Darwin memory, you can actually go into mission B and then complete all of these guys. However, these ones are a lot harder. And so I would recommend at least completing these guys over here. On top of that, a lot of these memories, especially like Ike, these memories are actually really great placeholders up until like you farm for your six star memories, especially for your DPS. And so memory rescue, I think is probably just one of like the greatest things that you could do right now to progress. Next, I want to talk about Warzone. So Warzone is actually finishing up in one day in 17 hours. So what exactly are you aiming for in Warzone? So what you really, really want is that you want to be in this promotion zone. And to get into this promotion zone, all you have to do is get like a higher amount of points so that you can actually land in here. There's not much to say here. You guys just need to make sure that you do it. And if you guys don't understand the importance of this, have a look at the shop. Look at all of this. You already see it. Darwin's over here. We've got Hana. We've got Estina. We've got like so many freaking good stuff here. Heisen, Da Vinci, Shakespeare. Oh my Lord. If you guys don't do Warzone, I don't know what you guys are doing. Okay. So the next thing I want to say is that you should not be farming skill points. And the reason you shouldn't be farming skill points is because like generally speaking, you only want to sink skill points into your main DPS and the QTE skills of your support and your tank unit. If you don't know, this one is the QTE skill over here. So let me just bring it up real quick. So I'm in the skill section and I'm going to come over here and you're going to see this one over here. And that is QTE because your main DPS is staying on the field for as long as possible. Your other characters, typically speaking, are only going to be used for their QTEs. And so it's for that reason that you should only be juicing the QTEs. And so as you can see, I made a little blunder, but I am lucky enough to have enough skill points to dump into my Lucia. So that's okay. But yeah, generally speaking, especially for your healer, you should only be dumping into QTE. On top of that, if you really are struggling for SP, let me show you where to like kind of first clear and get a couple more. So in Celica's class, you can actually come over here and do all of these guys. All of these trainings, as well as this one down here, the construct battles, they actually reward you with so much stuff. And so if I scroll over over here, oh, I'm so lucky. They're still here. You can see that each of these stages actually drops three SP. And so that's so freaking good. Typically speaking, that's going to be enough to kind of like get you going. And on top of that, you should be also getting a whole bunch from like your daily quests. So I'm talking about like these guys over here. So we can't see them right now, but like we actually do get that. And so TLDR for that one is don't sink your stamina into the SP farming. If you're going to sink your stamina into any training stage, you want to put it into the overclocking stage. And so just to be very, very clear, it's this one over here, equipment overclock material. Now, while we're here, I want to talk about this really briefly because like it's actually weighted. I can't remember 100%, but I believe weapon overclock materials actually has a less of a drop rate than the other ones. And so remembering that for like the day five novice mission, we want to actually have an equipment at level 40. Instead of pushing hard for the weapon, you could consider pushing like a consciousness or memory instead. I don't know why, but they just really like gimped the drop rate of these overclock materials for the weapons. Actually, on this note, there is another thing that we can do to progress and that's to actually go over to the shop and do some a little bit exchanging. So as you can see here, if you are missing something that is pretty crucial, you can exchange it around here, especially like I just told you guys, like one of them is going to be weighted. I just really cannot remember which one, but if it's really affecting you, you can exchange it over here. Okay. And so actually on that note, I do think it's a weapon overclock core because like this exchange rate is absolutely crazy. It costs six of these for one of these weapon overclock cores, but it only costs two for a memory one. And if I scroll over a bit, it's actually only going to cost one of these to go into three of these. So yeah, it's got to be the weapon overclock core that is just much rarer than the other ones. So if you are looking to push your weapon, this is one choice that you can make. However, do remember, 
remember that this is inefficient. And what I mean by that is that like typically speaking, if you're doing like a conversions or like stamina efficiency or whatever, it's probably going to come out like with you losing a little bit. And if you are past the blue stage, you can start looking at the purple ones like over here as well in the exchange shop too. But otherwise, that's all pretty good. Actually, whoa, I see the recycle shop down here and I want to talk about this now. And so I want to talk about this because we actually have a whole bunch of these weapon shards and you get these weapon shards from like recycling your four star weapons. So one of your like main three characters actually is using like a three star weapon still, I would highly suggest getting a four star weapon for them at least. And so what you need to do is you actually need to recycle a bunch of four star weapons, get this currency so that you can buy out another four star weapon that you desire. And so to recycle a weapon, let me show you how to do that real quick right now. So guys, it's actually not in the constructs, it's actually in the items. So if you come over here, you see that there is a recycle button down here. If I click on recycle and I click on one of these bad boys, which is simply just enhancement material, you'll see that I actually am able to get 150 of these guys over here. And so as you can imagine, you only need to break down three of these to be able to get a four star weapon. I personally think it's worth it, especially if you're still using like crappy three star weapons. But again, as always with four star things, like try not to invest into them overly much. All right, guys. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is this event over here, the energy recovery operation. And if you guys did see my last video, you will realize like, you know, we need to spend a little bit of stamina or energy and then we'll be able to obtain some of the event tokens. And so from this point of view, I want to say that you want to be saving your stamina pods at least for like the next five hours or so because when the event starts if you have that stamina saved up I do think that you can like rush through it a little bit faster than everyone else. I personally believe that they are going to give us like enough stamina to be able to complete the entire event without like using stamina pots or anything. However just to be safe I would probably just hold on to those pots at least. And so if you guys haven't realized in your main in your inventory over here items and in the third one material you're going to see a bunch of these guys here. And so these guys are actually like your stamina pots so they hold like 60 serum each. And actually whilst we're in this screen and wow this video is going to keep going on and on if I keep seeing things. There's actually a lot of stuff here so when you think you're out of cogs you're not really out of cogs and what I mean by that is that look at this boy over here I've got a whole bunch of cogs here. This is already freaking 400k cogs and then this guy over here 100k times what times three? In my inventory alone it looks like I've got 700k cogs stacked up already. On top of that you've also got like gifts over here so you can open those up and then give it to like your children and the last thing of importance I guess is this guy over here which is like your memory boxes. How However, typically this is just going to be like for your fodder. All right, guys, I think that's kind of it. Uh, looking through this, the only other thing I can think of is that don't be afraid of overcapping your EXP because your EXP actually overflows into the next level. So as you can see, I can't add any more, but it really it's at 630 out of 1120. And so when I get to level 33, she's going to be level 32 with 630 EXP. So yeah, guys, don't be afraid to slam all of these EXP pods into your characters. Oh, one more thing. I think this is going to turn out into a very long video. And for that, I'm very sorry. But essentially, this is your bounty missions. And as you can see, there is a big fat stack of EXP in there. Yeah, there's also purple cards, which is really freaking good because you want to be rolling. But that fat stack of EXP is there. And if I go into select mission, you'll remember before that that S rank mission was 160 EXP. And then for A rank missions, we've got 140 and then B rank, we've got 120. In the bounty system, typically speaking, you want to be looking for stuff like this. An S rank bounty mission with the purple cards. However, if if you're really cutting it close and you cannot find any of these and you're getting a little bit desperate, then settle for at least any S rank mission. And the massive reason behind that is because of this fat EXP over here. Okay, okay guys, I think that's it, that's it. Okay, we need to stop, we need to stop right here. I got a secret message guys and that is play smart. And so if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it lets me know that you've actually made it all the way to the end of the video. And so for that, I am very, very thankful. Otherwise, please like, subscribe, comment. You guys already know the works. And if you would like to like support the channel, there are a couple of ways down in the description below. We've got affiliate links to like Bluestacks and LD Player as well as the membership program which is a cool thing where you get an emote as well as a badge. But otherwise as my brother from another mother once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.